Hi, this is Teresa, Field Application Engineer of Moxa Australia team. Although new technologies and standards like IEC 61850 are default choice for greenfield projects, we still have a large amount of previous generation systems that will be in use for decades ahead. Also, in some cases, legacy technologies are more suitable due to cost and proven effectiveness considerations. In this video, I'm going to demonstrate a Moxa industrial gateway that can bridge systems with different communication protocols. In particular, we will look at how to convert DMP3 and MoBus, which are common protocols used by electric utilities, into IEC 62850 MMS, which is the preferred protocol for modern digital substation. MK5119 support multiple protocols, but only one pair of protocols can be configured at a time. So I will demonstrate two scenarios. In scenario one, I will connect MoBus TCP server device to MMS client. Therefore, MK will act as MMS server and MoBus TCP client. And in scenario two, a DMP3 outstation will be connected to MMS client. So MK will be configured as MMS server and DMP3 master. Let's start with the first scenario and take a look at the equipment we have. This is MK5119. It has a compact size, thin rail mounting, and come with two Ethernet ports and one zero port with two KV isolation to connect devices. LED indicate power and communication status. And on the top, there's a redundant power input that support 12 to 48 VDC. In our first scenario, we are going to communicate with the MoBus TCP device. This modular remote I.O. from Moxa called IL Things 4510 acts as a MoBus TCP server and is connected to MGate through this switch. IO Things is equipped with several I.O. modules, one of which has analog inputs, which in turn are connected to these knobs below. On the other side of protocol conversion, MGate is connected to my laptop, which runs Omicron IED Scout as MMS client. So I will configure MGate to pull analog inputs with MoBus TCP, then convert it to MMS and report back to IED Scout. Let's start by checking the configuration of IELTS 4510. After logging into web user interface, we can see system information dashboard with essential parameters. To see input output status, you can click on module and I/O. The knobs are connected to analog input module channel 0 and 1. These are the current values. Now, let's navigate to protocol menu and click on MOBUS to check which registers are currently configured to store value of these analog inputs. Looks like scaled value are stored in input registers, which are accessed with function code 04, starting from address 3104. Each input channel used two words to store its value. So with A channel on this module, we need to read 16 words in total. Now that we know which MOBUS address and function code to use, let's configure MK5119 to read analog input values and map them to tags. First, I need to set up proper roles for MK. This is done in Protocol Conversion menu under Protocol Setting. Here we can set up MK as MMS Server and MOBUS TCP Client by selecting proper roles of end devices that we are connecting. Once that is done, I can navigate to MOBUS TCP Client section to configure protocol parameters. Here, I click Add to configure a MOBUS command that is going to be used to pull IO Things 4510. I will give it a name, which as you see is used as prefix for tag names. Key in IP address of IO Things, select function code 04 with address 3104 and quantity 16, and set data type to flow to read all at analog input channels. I leave trigger and polling interval as default, so NG will send this command once per second. After clicking OK, I can see that the command is successfully added and I can submit the MoBus configuration. Next, let's navigate to IEC 61850 server manual to configure the other side of the communication. As MMS server device, MG has to have an IEC 61850 data model. It can be predefined in an SCL file or created using this user interface. I will use the second option in this demonstration. There are several parameters in basic setting category that I need to define including IED name, SS point name, logical device, and subnet name. In a real project, 
This value follow overall substation configuration, described it in SCD file. By default, there are only two mandatory logical nodes called LLN0 and LPHD. To represent analog inputs of IOTHINGS 4510, I need to add appropriate logical node. In this example, I will use generic process IO logical node class with two analog input data objects. For easier access to analog input's momentary values, I will add both magnitude data components of both data objects to data set under LLN0. With that, I can submit data model setting and proceed to data mapping. The window on the left has MMS data model that I configured, so I can navigate to GGIO logical node that I created and select magnitude data attribute of analog input 1 data object. In the window on the right, I select MOBUS TCP tag that I created during MOBUS command configuration. Once elements on both sides are selected, I can simply click the data mapping button to link both together. I will repeat the same steps for analog input 2. And the final step of MMS configuration is to specify an MMS client that will connect it to MGate. This is going to be my laptop with MMS client software. So I will give it a name and put IP address of my computer. To examine the result, I will use IED Scout software from Omicron, which acts as an MMS server. First, I need to establish MMS session to MGate using its IP address. Then, expand the dataset tab to quickly find magnitude of analog inputs. I can drag these two objects to activity monitor to observe them. Once I turn the knobs, we can see the value change accordingly. These confirm that we successfully connected MOBUS TCP server device to an MMS client using MGate 5119. For troubleshooting purpose, MGate provides several functions. You can navigate to protocol status menu under system monitoring and use tech view to see all data that MGate gets from MOBUS TCP server device. These include values and timestamp. MOBUS TCP diagnostic menu shows active MOBUS connections and packet counters. And if you need to verify actual MOBUS exchange, there's a MOBUS TCP traffic menu where you can start real-time traffic capturing, observe packet in this window, or explore capture file for further analysis. Let's move on to second scenario and convert DMP3 to MMS. I'm going to connect to another end device that acts as DMP3 outstation. This is Schneider Electric RTU called Scada Pack, and it has several built-in inputs and outputs. This bottom is wired to binary input channel number 8 of the RTU. So we will use MGate to establish DMP3 session to this RTU, get status of binary inputs, and report back to our MMS client running on the laptop. This is the configuration software for SCADA pack. Let's take a look at the key parameters. SCADA pack is configured as a DMP3 TCP outstation with address 0 that expecting communicating to DMP3 master with address 4 over Ethernet. To reduce the delay in getting updated status of binary inputs, unsolicited messaging is allowed with notification delays set to 1 second. In binary point list, we can see that SCADA pack has 16 binary inputs. And since the bottom is wired to channel 8, we can make sure that it has a class 1 and unsolicited event attribute selected. Let's move on to the configuration of MGate. As in the previous scenario, the first step is to determine proper roles for MGate by selecting the end devices that will connect to it. This time, MGate will act as a DMP3 TCP master and MMS server. Next, based on the configuration of Scottapack, I will configure DMP3 parameters in DMP3 TCP UDP master menu. First, let's change the master address of MGate to 4, which is expected by Scottapack. Then click Add to create a DMP3 outstation profile. I will give it a name, fill in the IP address of the RTU, and set DMP3 address to 0, which was configured on Scottapack. Finally, I will enable unsolicited messages. As you can see, MGate can be configured to read different classes of data with different intervals. Class 1 polling period is 5 seconds by default, but we should see a change earlier based on unsolicited messaging. 
Next, I will add DMP3 objects. Select binary inputs from 0 to 15, and finally click Submit to activate the setting. To confirm DMP3 settings, we can open Tech View and observe newly created text. Same as in previous scenario, the second half of configuration is setting off MGA as IEC 61A50 MMS server. I will again use local SCL generator to define data model. Keying similar basic settings like IED, access point, logical device, and subnet name. And add new logical nodes to represent binary inputs of the RTU. I will use generic process IO class as type of logical node again. But this time, I will use single point controllable status output data object. Similarly, I will add the status value data attribute of this object to the data set, which then could be used in a report. MMS report is a functionality of MMS protocol that allows server to notify client about data change without relying on periodic polling. In a sense, it is equivalent to DMP3 unsolicited response. So let's add a new report, give it a name, description, set, report ID, and select previous created data set. Here I choose an unbuffer report to shorten the response time. In the trigger option, I select data change to have MGA setting a report every time the binary input status change. Finally, click submit to finish the configuration of the data model. The last two steps of MMS configuration are mapping data objects and specify the MMS client. I need to select the STVAL data attribute in the left window and binary input A tag in the right window and press data mapping to link them together. For MMS client, I will use my laptop again, so same name and IP address can be used. Clicking Submit activates the configuration. Let's check the result using ID Scout to connect to MGA using MMS again. This time, we will observe communication in two ways. One is by polling an object, and the other is receiving MMS report upon data change. To do that, I will drag both dataset and report into Activity Monitor. As you can see, report doesn't show anything until we trigger the binary input. Let me press the button and now we can see the ID Scout receive an update value both through polling and report. Once I release the button, value changed again. To better understand underlying communication, let's use sniffer function while pressing the button several more times. As we can see, there's a periodic polling that happens every second, and in addition to that, every time the status change, we have incoming report that contain change value. Back to MG5119 user interface, we have several features to assist in troubleshooting. TechView can be used to verify successful communication with our RTU and actual value reported to MGate. Protocol Diagnostics page shows active connections and packet counters for each protocol. And last but not the least, Traffic Capture gives you visibility of packet exchange and could help to analyze what is happening on both sides of the communication. For example, if I start capturing DMP3 traffic and press the button meanwhile, we can see that there was an unsolicited response generated by RTU. Industrial protocol gateways are useful communication tools for projects that have a mix of different technologies and devices. They are especially handy for integration and migration of existing automation system to IEC 61850-based substations. In this video, we only cover conversion between DMP3, MOBUS, and MMS protocols. However, Moxa MGA series support much more protocol combinations to fit different applications from a variety of industries. To learn more and pick a right solution for your particular scenario, please get in touch with your local Moxa representative. I hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks for watching and see you next time.